There's so many DIYers out there who find their house lighting a tricky topic. I'll be showing you how to wire up a ceiling rose, how you can change that for another light if you want to, and I'll also show you some of the most common mistakes that DIYers make when they wire up new ceiling lights. My aim is to bring you the most clear and easy to follow video on the internet and this really is aimed at the DIYer who wants to learn more about ceiling lighting in their home. Stick around and you're bound to learn something. But before we do any of that, I need you to hit the subscribe button down below for me. And if you like DIY videos, why not? Because there'll be loads coming out throughout the year and there'll be something to help you out. So make sure you're subscribed and smash that like button for me as well because that really helps this video reach and help more people just like you on YouTube. Did I spell it right? Danger? Yeah. Now DIYers constantly get loads of hate for working on their own systems. So first of all, if you are doing any work on your own system at home, following my videos, please make sure that you are confident, but more importantly, competent. And if you're not, do give an electrician a call. So the first thing I'll do is talk a little bit about the one-way lighting circuit in your home and what each of the components do and how the system actually works so that you can understand a, how the system works and B, how you can change parts of the system or diagnose faults, for example. So the first component in our system is the consumer unit. That's where the power comes into your home and then feeds all the individual light and circuits in your home. You'll typically have a six amp breaker and I'm guessing that most of you DIYers aren't gonna to wanna to play around with that system. You just wanna know about the light and circuit in your room. And we'll get to that very shortly. But first of all, you need to understand how the breaker unit and the consumer unit influences the rest of this system. This lighting circuit that we have here will come from a six amp breaker in the consumer unit and you'll have a wire running all the way around all the lights on the circuit. That might be upstairs, it might be downstairs. So let's say we have three rooms upstairs. So we have three lights. What happens is your wire comes from the consumer unit, feeds the first light, moves to the next room, feeds the next light, and moves to the next room and feeds the next light. And you can see here it says loop in from the previous room or from the consumer unit. And this is a one or 1.5 piece of twin and earth. That means it has a live conductor, a neutral conductor, and an earth conductor. The live conductor is brown, the neutral is blue, and the earth is yellow and green. Now I'll put a little chart on the screen, but in an elder home, you may find that your live is red your neutral is black and your earth will remain green and yellow. So let's go back to how the system in a typical room in the UK works. Now this area here, you can see it says ceiling above. This area here is loft space or space above the room if we're talking about a downstairs room. And that is where you'll find your wires running for this light and circuit from room to room. So our first wire comes into our ceiling rows and you have here a terminal on the ceiling rows called a loop terminal. You have here your neutral terminals and you have here your switch live terminals. So let's talk about the earths first. Each of these pieces of twin and earth has an earth wire and they all terminate in this earthing terminal here. Now let's go back to our loop in. Inside that loop in, you can see here we have a neutral wire. That goes into the neutral terminal here. Now there's two other neutral wires in that neutral terminal. The first one is our piece of flex, which goes down our pendant light. The second neutral, this one that you can see here, goes off to the next room. So all of the neutrals are actually in the same terminal block. If you think of it like this, it's just a daisy chain. It comes in from the previous room, goes out to the next room. The third conductor, this brown live here, that feeds our live loop or live terminal and we have live coming in and we have a live going out to the next room. Now let's take a look at the switch in your typical room. You'll have another piece of wire coming back out of the ceiling rows. It will go up into your loft space and it will come down the wall into your switch. Again, you have three conductors. You have your earth which needs to remain in your earth terminal. The second conductor inside your switch wire is a live conductor and it will come up this switch wire and that is your permanent live 
to the switch. And you have a third conductor inside here, which is blue, but it has a brown sleeve on it. Now that means that that is also a live wire, but it is a switched live. So it only becomes live once the switch is pressed. The power can then come into this terminal here, which also has a live wire to the bulb. And once the switch is pressed, it will come down here, down this piece of wire here, and power the light bulb. Now let me show you what's inside the switch here. Now, first of all, you can see that when our power leaves our rose fitting, it comes down this brown conductor here, which is our live, and it goes into the terminal on the back of the switch, labelled COM, that means common. When you press your switch to turn the light on, you allow the power to travel through to the terminal labelled L1. The power then travels back up the neutral wire, which is now a switched live wire, which means that's live once the switch is pressed comes out here and connects into this terminal and takes the power to the bulb. If we look back at the switch, what we also have in there is an earth terminal and we also have one in the Patras box here too. Now, anytime you have a metal faceplate, it needs to be earthed. So your earth wire, so your earth conductor needs to be terminated into that earthing terminal. If you have a metal back box in your wall, you also need to use this earthing terminal here, and you need to create a link from the switch to the back box so that that metal back box is earthed as well. Now I'll answer some of the most common questions I get asked on some of my other lighting videos. And yes, I do have other lighting videos on the channel. If you're interested in other home lighting videos, hit one of the little links that I'll put up here on the screen. And one of the most common mistakes that people make and questions that I get asked is what do I do if my light stays on permanently. So I've put a new light in and the switch does nothing. The light just stays on permanently. And let me show you how to fix that. The most common reason that your light stays on permanently after you've done some work on a light is that the power to the bulb, whether that be a bulb on a piece of flex or whether it be a decorative ceiling light, is that the live wire feeding the bulb is not joining up with the switch live but instead has been put into the permanent live loop or permanent live terminal lives. You need to move that to link up with the switch live so that the switch can come into effect. And that brings me to the second most common question that I seem to get asked by the DIY. Why is my light flickering now I've done some work on the system? And the most common reason I find is that either the switched live or the permanent live here just needs tightening up. Sometimes once you've done some work on them, they work loose. Likewise, if you've done any work on the light fixture itself, check all of your connections for any loose connections. It can sometimes be the bulb as well, so don't forget to give that a check. One of the other things people seem to ask me quite a lot on my YouTube is if I've lost my switch wire and I get in a muddle and I don't know which one the switch wire is, how can I find that out? Well, the answer is you need to do a continuity test on the cable, so let me show you how to do that now. So let's assume that you've got all these wires hanging out of the ceiling, but you've lost your way a little bit and you're not sure which one this switched wire is. Because maybe somebody hasn't put a sleeve on there to tell you it's a switched live, or maybe that's dropped off. Now the easiest way to find out which wire goes to your switch is to grab yourself one of these Wago connectors and put in the neutral and the earth into that Wago like that. Next up, grab a multimeter with continuity function. So switch the multimeter to continuity and it'll say open loop on there. To test your multimeter, touch the two prongs together and you should hear a beep. And then all you need to do is touch the corresponding wires. So put one of your probes onto the earth and one onto the neutral and you can see there you have a reading. Now of course, if you don't get continuity, move the connector onto one of the other wires until you get continuity and you'll know you've found the switch wire. So the last thing I'm going to do is reinstall that rose fitting for you just so you can see how one's fitted. So to reinstall the ceiling rose, what we need to do is bunch all the wires together first of all. So that's the loop in from the previous room and the loop out to the next room and the switch wire and stick all the wires through the through the hole in the plate and then obviously this is not a real ceiling so it's a little bit more difficult 
let's screw that plate in place so that's secure. So to keep it simple we will do the loop in first so working on the loop in wire so that's the wire that comes either from the consumer unit or from the previous room. First of all undo the earth terminal and we'll put our earth wire inside the earth terminal. Do that up for now. Next up we'll put the neutral wire into the neutral terminal and then the live wire goes into the live loop terminal. So that is our loop in from the previous room. Next we have this middle wire here which goes to the next room. So that's the loop out so that we can carry on the light circuit to the next room. Again, first of all, we need to get the earth in place. So attach that into the earth terminal. Again, we'll do that up for now. Now put the neutral wire into the neutral terminal. And again, the live wire goes into the live loop. Now we look at our switch wire. So that's the wire going down to the switch. Again, first of all, we need to get the earth wire in and then we can do up that earth terminal nice and tight for the final time. Next up, we have this wire that looks like a neutral, but it's actually a switched live. It's indicated as a switched live with the brown piece of sleeving, or at least it should be. And what we now need to do is put that switched live wire into the flex terminal. And do that up nice and tight. The next wire to put in is our permanent live for the switch, and we need to put that into the live loop. Check everything's nice and tight and that nothing's gonna be pulled out and that you're not gonna get any loose connections. We now need to add a bulb, but don't forget the screw cap. Let that fall down to the bulb. Nip these flex wires up so that they're easier to get into the terminals. Our neutral wire to the bulb goes into the neutral terminal. And our live wire goes into the flex terminal next to the switch live. And that is how you wire up your own ceiling roofs. So hopefully I've explained things in a way that you DIYers out there can follow along without too much technical jargon. If the video has helped you out today, smash the like button because that really helps the video reach and help more people just like you on YouTube. And if you're not a subscriber already, there'll be a little pop-up appear on the screen sometime about now. Hit that for me because you're not going to want to miss out on some of the content I've got to come throughout the rest of the year. And don't forget, if you want to use this video alongside any of my other lighting videos, check out my electrical playlist on the channel and you'll find all of my lighting tips and guides on there. I've been the DIY Guy and I'll see you guys in the next one.